Yes, indeed, he had returned to the headwaters of life. The headwaters of love to complete all of life's strife and shut it on down and bring us around. What? Right into the heart where we get that living work of art coming forward as the life we're living, babies. Yes, indeed, that's what we're given to be. The true artists of life, the true artists of love in motion. Those that take the paint of life and create from all that colorful existence the experience, the persons, the places, the things we're being, the feelings we have that just grow and grow and expand, don't you know? Oh my goodness. Don't you know? In the flow, I salute to you, darlings. Ah... Uh, Coffee is the magic elixir of the morning, is it not? And what's the magic elixir of expansion and growth? A little Mary Jane to help you along the way. Ease the pain so you can get past the burden of it and see that you're only blessed and not burdened ever, no matter how it seems here, man. Oh, my... Breaking in a new corn cob pipe there. They don't always smoke just right. But that one does, man. It just, mmm, see the badge? Feel that? Because I share that high with you. I don't hold back. I give it my all, man. You know? So what I feel, you feel. We just radiate it out here from 9,000 feet high consciously. The same way you should. You know, when you do, guess what? You start to hear the call of the ancestors, etc. The same way... Those beautiful people did up there in them tribal lands in North Dakota, up there near Cannonball, when they had to rise up and make a stand for the Standing Rock tribe and tell the Black Snake, the oil pipeline, to go its greedy little way somewhere else. No, not to be, not to exist anymore. See, the reality behind that protest, if you will, or the protection of the headwaters of life, the headwaters of love, because that is headwaters of the Missouri up there, which is kind of also the headwaters of the Mississippi then, too, or that side of it, you see. The other side would be the Ohio River over in Pennsylvania somewhere, wherever it begins up in, might even be New York, hell, I don't know, somewhere up in there. But see, that's all Mississippi, yeah, all the Mississippi drainage, see. So they pollute that water, they're polluting the water for like 80 million people, but that's not the point, really. The point is we should respect our earth enough to look for alternatives. And knowing we have the alternatives, to embrace those alternatives and no longer rely on such petroleums and petroleum jellies and so forth, man. Just let it all go. Live in the conscious true heart. Let the love come forward in the form of free energy that we don't have to pay for. See, we could set ourselves free. And that's what I think Standing Rock's all about. Now, the tribe up there, the Standing Rock tribe and the council therein, has decided they want to shut the camp down. They want everybody to go home. The point's been made. Uh, the rest of it's up to the courts. Well, people, I don't think it's working that way. I don't know what's happened with the tribe. And I respect their wishes, and I'm not going to go charging up there and uh, go create a camp just because they say not to. But I'm really questioning the wisdom of their decision. I'd like to know a little more background on it. So if you guys could put that out on your tribal paper and kind of explain yourself a little better. Because otherwise, you know, we got some real plans for you here in this spiritual reality. And babies come spring, come summer, you might just have the greatest success if you just allow this protest to continue. This encampment to enlarge and grow. And, you know, get rid of the rattlesnakes. They're obvious, just like they are in real life, man. When they have rattlesnakes around, when they're in your troop, and they're throwing rocks at the cops or doing whatever it is, instigating troubles, they are agent provocateurs brought to you by your banker friends again, man. Send them packing. Don't allow these people to live in your camp. Anybody that's going to cause trouble and not be peaceful, get them the hell out of there and get them the hell out of there fast. And have the balls enough to do it, to maintain the camps and police yourselves. And if you can't do that, okay, then close them down. And I don't blame you. I understand. 
but you'll come around. I know you will because that, there's that one lady up there. Oh, I'm not going to mention her name, but she owns a little land up there tribally, and it's hers. I mean, her family's been there forever, and one of the camps is there, and they're going to stay there no matter what. And so, okay, I'm sorry if that's defiant and disrespectful of the tribe, but maybe the tribe's disrespectful of the cause, and they need to reconsider. That's why I'm asking the tribe to please explain itself a little better there on their own website and let us spread it around so we either understand why you're doing this and we'll just relocate the effort but you see that is catalytic country up there in North Dakota why do you think that oil boom didn't hit you till late 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 like the 2000s or so you know because we didn't want to corrupt and pollute that place we wanted to keep that energy pure as we could so they didn't find that oil till way late now, did they? See, but what did it do to your state and your, your tribals? It just ruined everything, polluted people with money and drugs and all kinds of nasty shit. Violence went up off the charts, right? And now your cops are crazy and think they're military and think they can just run over you and do whatever they want with you, see? And maybe somebody's offered to pay you off as tribal leaders. I know that happens a lot in the past. And if that's happened here, be honest about it. Say that you've taken some money for it. And that's why you're requesting the camps to shut down. And let the campers do what they will. You got your money. You did your part. Just be honest about it, okay? If that's what you've done, and I hope not, but if you did, you did, you know. You can't fault yourself for that. I mean, look at this world around you. Everybody's going for the money, right down to the janitors and the garbage people. Everybody's taking bribes to spy on everybody else or sell out their friends or whatever. But everybody's taking bribes. Everybody is corrupted. No one seems to have ethics, yet a few people do. <laughs> a few million women, too, man. How about that, man? That was such a beautiful thing. Take your energy from that, guys. Standing Rock, build on that. Let the ladies and the veterans and everybody else help you, man. Don't 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 get chicken shit. No. You got victory in your hands, man, you know. And it's not just on that level. It's on the level of what we can truthfully achieve here. Energetically, we can bring forward the secret technologies. If you'll just hold your ground, and no one will ever have to make a stand against a pipeline or an oil well again. I know there's a lot of huge investment. A lot of money in that. Well, realize that money is nothing compared to the life of our Mother Earth and the people on it. That money means shit. And it's time to ignore it. Let it go. you got a bigger investment in humanity, in your own life, in your own heart, in being able to live with yourself. If you don't want to go insane and drive yourself over the edge and, you know, go out and feed yourself to the sharks or something, best to get it inside, best to catch on to this piece. Take this magic carpet ride while you can. Expand and grow, in other words. You know, and I, I tell you, man, you want to keep those, those meetings, those encampments peaceful? You got to do meditations together. You know, you got to have sing songs and so forth. You know, I don't know what you're doing up there, and maybe you're doing that shit already, and if you are, bless you for it, man. Do more of it, you know. Do everything you can to promote the common energy of expansive love. Love the oil workers that are shooting at you. Love the cops that are pepper spraying you. You know, it doesn't mean you got to take it, but love it anyway, man. Just see the love we're all made of, and this will destabilize the reality around you, that which is so harsh and cruel and wants to kill you all and not only dominate your lands, pollute them. Got to admit it, the real desire of the promoters behind that pipeline is to destroy the magic lands of North Dakota, etc. They don't give a shit. Destruction is their way. That's why they are so in love with war. But see, that's an aspect of ourself that we've personified. And to tell you the truth, an ET presence that controls humans. And there you got it straight up. And that's what you're making your stand up against there in Standing Rock. So I urge you tribal leaders to consider that. To look and see what you know what you're up against. Don't sell yourselves short, man. You're far stronger than any ET presence. Ever. I know they got you hoodwinked and thinking you're subservient. That's horse shit. We are the children of creation. As such, we're protected from any influence such as that. Now, we can co-opt that energy and make it beneficial, because we always do. That's what we are. 
the colorful baby babies of creation that can change anything into a format of love. This is what your ancestors are telling you. They missed it so you could get it. We've brought it this far. Now we've catalyzed you into moving forward where it endangered your very lives to have this pipeline present in your territory. So you had to make a stand. Just like the American people had no choice in this election whatsoever. So if we get a pukehead for a president, time to make a stand. And so the women have set the example. Anytime this clown tries to pull any bullshit, same way as the folk in North Dakota, stand up against him. But do so lovingly, peacefully. You don't even have to say a God-blessed word. Just stand there silently, but do assemble and convey your energies, the energies of corrective heart love, into whatever situation is happening. Whether it's a pipeline, uh, a busted oil well in the, in the Gulf of Mexico, or, you know, something even worse than all of that. Fukushima, for example, or Fukushima, as I call it, you know. That was the U.S. Navy's doing, by the way. You know, we need to get a People's Tribunal up and start investigating all this stuff. Because people will start singing when they realize they can do so safely. And we, the people, got to protect the whistleblowers that come out of the secret programs. You know, there are people now brave enough to talk about. They work for the Navy. They saw a bomb get planted in the bottom of the ocean and exploded, which created the tsunami, which destroyed Fukushima and created the desire. Now, people are willing to talk about that. We at least ought to pay them some attention and see if there's any validity to it. If it is, we got we got to dismantle our government. And we got to get this guy that just took over this maverick to be the guy to do it. Take it down. Bring it around. It's either going to be a carrying instrument in our hands or it's not going to exist any longer. We're through with the warfare, the insanity of bombing people to prove a point. Just because you disagree with them politically or you, you're envious of their oil or their... Uh, that's what I mean. We bring the free energy out. we got nothing to fight about. Your oil is worthless. You know, sure, we need some lubricants now and then, but we can get that from hemp. We don't need... Your oil. We never did. Give it back to mother. It's her lubricant. It's her love. You leave her the hell alone. Embrace her. This is what your own ancestors are telling you. I'm talking to the billionaires too that control all this shit and the ETs behind them. Because that's your mother too. This mother earth is the symbology of the mother love of the universe. It's the sinner love from which all creation springs forward. That's what we call our little program here, Spring Creek, because it's the headwaters of love, the veritable, original waters of life flowing forward through the loving heart of each of us in this creation. See, that's the headwaters. That's the beginning. That's the place that always is, because every moment is a beginning, and there is no end. The journey's never over. The journey never ends. Wherever you are on it, that's where it just begins. We've already arrived to the place we've already been. <laughs> the journey does never over. It never, never ends, man. See, we're always on it. We're, and we're constantly growing because of it. This is what your ancestors are telling you. This is what's flowing in. This is the conscious presence that's flowing in this morning. It is an ancestral energy. And it's influence in and affecting all of us as human beings because a few of us can ground that energy in and because we do into the earth, and because we do, then everyone else gets it too. Darlings, I love you. And I am your love in motion too. Both. And we're making love with our mother like has never happened before. Yes, making love with our mother. That is participating in the excitement of being the creative love that brings it all into being. See, it's not that old, crude, unartistic thing and way we've been doing it, eh? This is a true gathering of the ancestral heart with the angelic heart in the human being. And therefore, the juncture of all love inside of each human being that is, including those that live off planet, and there's plenty of those too. Darlings, and the veil begins to fall away. So our behavior changes greatly. We realize the oneness in the dissolving away of the veil. We lose the illusion of separation. Then it don't matter who's in the White House or the Red House or the Blue House or the Green House. 
because it's us and we are present and because we are present then things go in our direction it puts an end to all political rhetoric all political action the only thing left to do is to treat one another decently and exuberate our love you know excitedly into this creation and party on because of it man be the excite excitable center of it all have the big o as your continual existence We've lived long enough to allow that we might deserve this. Just for the abuse we've had to take into ourselves and the abuse we've shared upon others, man. I mean, you know, it's always a two-way street now, isn't it? You know, flow comes in, the flow goes out. It gets misinterpreted, becomes quite hurtful and hateful, doesn't it? Especially when we genderize it, nationalize it, or tribalize it. Oh, look at those motherfuckers over there. They ain't like us. Let's go kill them all. And shit like that, man. God! Ugh. Primal? That's not even primal. That's worse than, you know, it's polarity. And polarity is the illusion. Truth is what you're feeling now. These are the living years. It's the feeling that goes through all of those living years. It's the feeling that carries you along and the feeling that carries you into the rest of creation. If you'll just drop your fear of your own power, dear. See, you've been taught that your love is worthless, that it only gets you in trouble, that your heart is dishonest and pulls you into the wrong people in the wrong directions all the time. And by God, from some of the experience in his life, it seems that way, doesn't it? But the reality is you're learning and growing. Maybe you needed to restrict yourself and hold yourself back. You're capable of far too much love if you're partnered up with the right person or something like that. So you re-engineer the whole life You'll be restricted until there is a time and a space and a room for your great love. You see, we're considerate of one another and we're always in service to one another on that spiritual level, in that mystical way, the avenues of energy. See, even quantum physics is starting to see all this stuff. They see it in a different way, but it's all coming together and it's all coming into play. See, we already have everything we need to greatly succeed in this reality without there being any more materialization whatsoever. Because we can materialize anything and have it to ourselves right then and there anytime we want. It's just a matter of allowing ourselves through our gracious heart to come back into that form of creation. Now that takes a lot for a human being that is so conditioned as to think the mind is the ultimate master and everything else is subservient to that. Not recognizing that the mind is mere computer and it don't do shit by itself. Just goes around in big circles because that's all a computer can do. And that's where your cycles and seasons come from. When the heart is in direction, then the mind becomes a creative application in the universe. Then the mind becomes a presence of all of creation. And therefore through you comes the presence of this creation into being around you and again. You feel it, you live it all. And that is the big O. And it doesn't take a lot of woo, 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 or anything like that to get there. It takes a little relaxation and a whole lot of allowance in love. A whole lot of, well, forgiveness of self. You see past the mistakes of the past. You understand that you are a child of the universe. The veritable energy of the stars combined in union with the mother love personified in the earth. The veritable juncture then of creation from which it all arises. This is truth. This is you and I and all the rest that live here. We begin it. It's through our perceptions that the rest live. And through our perception that the rest give in to the will of the heart. As we allow it to be. So now we've been controlled, manipulated, pushed away from it. Especially women. So far from it they never thought they'd get it back. Yet they held it. They held that steady love somehow in all of these human existences through all of these generations so that we could allow it to come forward in the now as finally the reality is ready for it. We've hatched it out. We've, we've done our part, gone through all the darker ways of it, the polarized existence in other words. Now we bring it back to life, you see. I know in my own self, I had to let myself go clear over the edge again to bring myself back and I'm still in the process and you and I all of us then are going together to Spring Creek the headwaters of life 
where the love begins in creation, creating itself happily so. So merrily we exist here in this reality. And there's nothing to be pissed about, nothing to fight about. Be in this creative love. And the fight dissolves away from you. What comes in its place is correction in the reality around you. And ding-dongs and dickheads evaporate. And what comes forward? Uniform equity in creation. Life that just loves itself into being. And because it loves itself so much, can't help but love all the life around it too. And everything is peaceful and gracious and growing because it loves itself so God bless it much. That's our truth. That's our reality. You can't roller skate in a buffalo herd. You can't roller skate in a buffalo herd. Well, I don't know if you ever tried that before, but I certainly have. You know, most of my life I've been trying to roller skate in a buffalo herd. And every time, well, you know, those old buffaloes just pick me up and kind of uh, get me up off the ground and say, Come on, man, you're just an old clown. What are you doing trying to get yourself killed, man? Don't do that shit no more. Can't roller skate in a buffalo herd. I mean, don't you listen to Roger Miller ever. I mean, come on, man. I've got to tell you a little story about Roger Miller, you know. This dude came from some of the most humble circumstances on the face of the earth. God, you had to have a sense of humor to be born and live in Sayre, Oklahoma, a place where the wind blips across those high prairies and just beats the the, the bee dust is out of you day in, day out, man. Hardly anybody lives there, maybe two, three hundred people. Well, it wasn't even Sarah with this little town alongside of it there. That's the hometown of Roger Miller, man. I'm telling you, desolate country surrounded by chemicals and cotton fields and, you know, just the stuff you find out there in desolation country, man. Real near the panhandle of Texas, which is, wow, as bad, as desperate as it gets in the USA here on Turtle Island. That is some wild country. And as I say, the wind never stops blowing. The people are just all depressed and, you know, it's showing all the time. Talk about roller skating a buffalo herd. You're living contrary to your reality a lot out in a place like that. But there's old Roger Miller raising up out of that dust there in western Oklahoma. When he got to be of age, probably about 16 or so, puts out his thumb and heads for L.A. and says, I'm going to show the people the way. How you survive in a place like that? You got a sense of humor and you can sing or you can entertain your friends. You can get together for a round dance or a square dance or you can get together and take a little chance on romance. But oh my goodness, watch out for the shotgun wedding because that is real common out there in that country. That is, if you live to tell about it, they might let you go there. They might. They might not either, man. Them old cowboys and cowgirls, well, they take life a little more serious than some other folks do, but they too got to have that sense sense of humor, man, because that wind been blowing between their ears forever, don't you know? They need to come back to Spring Creek, you know, hang out for a little while. It's just a ways west of them there, you know, they just keep going. You find some of the wildest, most beautiful and spectacular country with wildlife up the Gazoozie. I'll never forget it. I was trucking down through the desert one time, going towards... Uh, what is that? Clay, Clayton, Texas. Yeah. Down there coming out of New Mexico. I mean, I'm out there on highway. What is that? 87 or 84? I can't remember. But the one that goes down from Raton there to Clayton, you know. But anywho, long story short, all of a sudden, I mean, I'm out in this dry, desolate desert country, you know. The kind where the wind blows all the time and shit. And it's just, you know, there's not much out there. A few, you know, gnarly old lizards and jackrabbits and shit, but not much else, you know. And by golly, I swear to goodness, this bear comes running across the highway in front of me. I mean, he's a big one, too, like five, six hundred pounds. Big bear for out there. Man. And like, what's this bear doing in the desert, you know? I just blew me away. But, you know, I, I thought maybe I was seeing, you know, uh, some shape-shifting mystical action there or something like that, a ghost bear. You know, maybe there was a message and I was searching my soul and it says, get through Clayton, but go the speed limit. 
<laughs> and don't bear your soul to no one there, man. Just keep on trucking. It's Texas, you know. That's a wild, wild country out there. You grow up, you think you're a human jackrabbit, you know. I mean, it's 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 tough country. But I couldn't believe it. What's this bear doing out there? You know, bears don't live in there. There's nothing for them to eat out there. They, you know, they're not into lizards and shit. You know what I mean? They like berries and creeks and, you know, little bunny rabbits when they can get them. Things like that, you know. That's their 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 choice of fare, you know. And they only live where that kind of stuff is, up in the mountains, you know, and where they can be pretty much disguised, not out in that open country where there ain't even hardly any sagebrush to hide behind. What's a bear doing out there? Well, a couple of years later... I'm out there a little north of that country, and I'm playing tourists for a little bit, actually explorer, because I'm checking out the action out there in that panhandle country, Oklahoma panhandle country, going into Colorado there, but running the, the gravel roads in the background, you know, the stuff that you're not supposed to be driving down because it's all private ground or whatever, you know. But you never know what's to be found out in that world, so you go there, check it out, man. And the action is, like, you come all of a sudden into this little canyon. This comes out of nowhere. You're out there in that flat country, but then the road starts to twist and turn a little bit. And the next thing you know, you're going up this beautiful little canyon. You're surrounded by red cliffs on both sides, but they're starting to stretch out a little bit. You come to a little bit of, I mean, the, there's trout in the stream down. I mean, I stop and check it out. And beaver making dams and stuff. And bear in that country, yeah, there was a bear or two run by us. You know, because they're not used to seeing people out there. There's not that much traffic in that country. Maybe one or two cars a week or something like that, you know. Well, a day, I don't know, but it's pretty desolate out there. But there's this, like, the Garden of Eden out there in this little canyon. And it does, it opens up. Of course, there's a little gateway out there, a little stone gateway like there always is. And then a, a valley that's fed by this little creek. And it's not so little, man. It's got some water in it, you know. Out there in the middle of nowhere, comes off the off of those uh, that that little finger of the Rockies that stretches kind of east and west from Raton onto the east there, you know. Gradually becomes a a, a bunch of uh, what do you call them? Buttes and flat tops and shit, plateaus. But this is down in the middle of that country, you know. It's just like a little. Garden of Eden paradise. There's hay fields out there, sprinklers that irrigate out of the creek and stuff, you know, and like ranching country, you know, and just this most god awful beautiful cacti that puts out these great little flowers, and you know, those buds are going to be as good as peyote any day of the week just because of where they're growing and the spectacular beauty of that cacti. And I'm telling you, they're everywhere. You know, besides all the green of the greenery, the trees, there's trees along the creek, of course, and then the green of the fields that the ranchers are, uh, and these one or two little ranch houses out there in the middle of nowhere, and wow, I tell you, man, this is the kind of country that, you know, well, you'd be awful lonely out there, it's, you know, it's far, far, far from civilization, you know. You're three hours from the nearest town, and it's of any size, and it's pretty wild. Well, either one of them, Raton or Trinidad. Trinidad's on the Colorado side, you know, of the Raton Pass, and Raton's on the other side. They're both, you know, wild little towns. They're ranching country, man, you know. It, people are a little fuzzy around the edges, you know. And because it's so desolate, well, the crank has invaded the speed, you know, and... People can be a bit unpredictable. You have to watch out for that kind of behavior. But you know, some of the most decent folk on earth live in that country too. They're real and they're right down to earth and they look you in the eye and they say what they mean and mean what they say. And you can get along with people like that because they're completely honest with you. You know, if they got anything hidden, it's skeletons in the closet and you don't need to know about that anyway, man. You know, none of your freaking business. <laughs> but it's the kind of country where a soul can find its freedom because there's no people out there to restrict you. There's lots of animals and wildlife to encourage you, to connect with you, and show you the nature of your true family. It's one of those places I'd love to own a rancho out there, man, you know, and bring people there just to breathe of the atmosphere, you know. It's a surprising thing. Out there in the middle of all this desolation, and there's this little Garden of Eden. It's like Spring Creek. 
That's, you know, Oklahoma and Colorado's version of Spring Creek. It's hidden just like Spring Creek is, but the universe knows exactly where it is. And when we talk about Spring Creek, what are we talking about? The headwaters of life, the little stream of love from which all life arises, the very beginning of it all, man. So that's what we say from the beginning here, because this is the headwaters of life. Coming to you from 9,000 feet high in the Rocky Mountain sky. You got that guy, Grandpa Coyote. Up the creek, man. With you, babies. And crick and creek are interchangeable words. Crick is a little colloquialism, as some places in the West uses to describe a little stream of water. Same as some people use the term creek. So they're interchangeable. Like love and life are interchangeable, you know. <laughs> love, life, and life. The same exact thing all the way around. That's why the sun's warm. That's why the daylight's bright. And so's the night when there's sunlight. You see, bouncing off of the moon up there, that artificial satellite of love, which is like the control valve from which the invaders uh, contained us. I saw the time. I didn't see the time the moon came in, but I saw the time, uh, you know, in the way back past, I mean way back, you know, where they sent the invaders and made a base on the moon, and that's where they invaded us from. They worked on the genes and genetics up there, and they were on many levels, not just physical, you know. And that's where they um, developed the invasion from, you know. Babies, you got to understand, it's a long story, man. But it starts at Spring Creek. And if we can remember that, if we can remember those first little trickles of water that made life for us, where we all started to wake up as the little amoebas in the ponds of love that surrounded these little springs rising up in the headwaters of love, you know. If we can remember that amoebic state, where we're just a little drop of water, too, that's enlightened by the love of the water, which comes from the light, too. It's all light, all of it, which means it's all love, then. And it's light and life. The water is the place of motion and feeling. Feeling because you can put it in motion the same way the ocean does and brings forward all the life. It's very primal to be that physical. In the water, the amoeba, which, you know, yeah, in just a few seconds becomes a human person. Way beyond what we see before us now. These were spectacular humans. Kind of like what you're remembering now. I mean, what we got now is gorgeous. I don't care how warped you are and how, you know, upset you are with your bodily presence. It's gorgeous. Because it's created of your own love and of your respect for life, believe it or not. That's why you're here. We're rooting it down in that water, man. Those headwaters of love, see? And because I can describe that little place to you, maybe one day we'll take a trip there. You know, just pass on through. Or maybe one day we'll get lucky and one of those ranchos will come our way. Who knows? It'd be awesome to have a retreat. And this is desolate country, man. And the weather is not that great, you know. But because it's a little canyon, the winds pass over the top a lot. So it's not like living up there on the prairies where, ooh, you get blown away all the time, man. There's some peace in these little valleys. There's some peace in this little canyon. It's a gorgeous little place. I hate to even talk about it in public because, you know, now others are going to go look for it and probably find it. And I don't want to see it get polluted like the rest of the world is. I want it to stay primal and sweet and isolated, you know. Because that's Spring Creek, you know. That's one little representation we got of it here. You know, even in Colorado, because parts in Colorado, parts in Oklahoma, it's out in that country, man, you know. And it's like, it's that one little pristine place we still have left. You know, the rest of it's all gotten polluted by way too much population and over-regulation and, you know, the gluttony of Earth and the U.S. of A. and all that shit. But it's still Colorado, so it's kind of in line. We're very hip here, you know. We try to get along with nature, even though, you know, a lot of folks here are just like, wow. You know, well, they're oil people, you know, and the oil business is big in Denver, you know. I mean, it owns the town, man, but... We're still coming around, believe it or not, babies. And at least, you know, I mean, that one little place, that one little presence, isolated though it may be. And I know not many people are ever going to go there because it's horrible around it, man. I mean, you know, it's just not very complimentary and conducive to human existence. It really isn't. It's a hard life out there on those prairies, man. Especially with these winds blowing down off of these mountains, you know. 
You get some horrible tornadoes out there. You don't hear about them much because there's nothing much to destroy out there. But once in a while they ram into a town. And there they go, down. But they come right back up again. Kind of strange how that works, isn't it? But there's a bunch of desolate, isolated towns that are gone now, you know. Ghost towns all over the place out there. I mean, pockmarked here and there. Not all. It's not like they're thick as thieves. One every 200 miles, 100 miles, something like that, you know. I mean, they're there, man, you know. It's desolate country, you know. And the towns that are remaining there are just hanging on by the edge of their, their skin until you get out there towards Sterling and stuff. Then it's not so bad. I mean, it's still prairies, but it's getting a little lower in the elevation. The winds are getting a little calmer out there, you know, and the land's a little more habitable, a little more, not quite as hostile as it is out there across that high prairie coming from, like, the Front Range on over towards Kansas, you know. Wow. I tell you. So I've seen tornadoes out there, you know, half mile wide, you know, shit like that. And that's probably, they probably get them even bigger out there, you know, and they get lots of them, too, because that's the nature. That old wind come blowing off these mountains and it hits all that high, almost flat country. Well, it's arroyos and stuff, you know. Wow. I tell you, it's mystical and magic. If you could stand to live there for a while, two or three years out there, make a real human being out of you, or drive you totally insane, one of the two. You get to know spirit really well in country like that, because that's the only thing that's going to keep you alive, those angel friends that live in turf like that. And they're there, you know, to help the existence along, because they know it's tough. You know, I mean... Mother Earth creates it as she will, and the humans that inhabit that are ready for it, or they wouldn't be there. So most of them really, though they're depressed, are kind of happy in their depression. <laughs> Strange as that may seem, they don't mind the wind blowing, they kind of like it, and you get used to it, you know. They like, you know, hunkering down against the wind and bundling up and going down to the vast little coffee shop on earth and having a cup with their neighbors and running into a stranger or two. You know, these are the salt of the earth, man. These are some real people, man, <laughs> that know how to hang on despite desperate, because, you know, you just learn to love it. Wherever you may be, that's the secret of living and making paradise out of any place. And then it all becomes spring crick. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> so anyway, getting back to that Clayton, Texas and the bear that ran in front of me, it obviously came out of that canyon country there. And I hear that just south of there, there's another mountain range with similar um, happenings in it, these little oases, you know, little spring creeks here and there, man. So that bear was probably just passing from one range to the other, changing his location, you know, and he had to go through the desert to do it. Wow. Man, isn't it awesome? You know, I mean, how many times in your life do you come back to those original moments and these original places that bring these original moments up? I can remember being on tops of mountains and lying there absorbing the sun and the energy around me and communing with the stars and so forth and like feeling that was the beginning. You know, that that's the spring creek. Right there, you know, union, total union with life. Yet the wind's blowing, it's cold as hell up there, and you're not going to stay there for long. But you did find this little rock shelter where you could get away with it. And sometimes Mother Earth invites you to some of her magic places, which are the tops of mountains just about all the time. And she'll provide you with a little nest of some sort or another, and you can go there and she will treat you right. And you will journey with her heart. And you will start to understand things you forgot about a long time ago. And you start to get the memory. I was in such a place going through grand experience, you know, one time with Mother. And she showed me one of the cities of our beginning. I may have talked about it before in this show. I usually do. I mean, you know, I've been on here for like three and a half years now. Told a lot of tales, haven't I? Yeah, yeah. So a little repetition, but it's good for us, you know. And there's new crowd all the time here, too. Tuning in, coming and going, man. And you know, it's like the flow of love, man. You come here, you get touched, and you move on. But anywho, yeah, I even saw while I was there this old city. And I think it was Atlantis, but I don't know. It could have been something, Lemuria. It could have been anything. But it was huge. It was like 3,000 miles long and 2,000 miles wide. And right above it, in fact, a lot of people still live uh, in this thing. It was a mothership 
perched up there on this big old pedestal right there in the middle of all this, you know what I mean? This is huge. This thing's as big as a planet sometimes, some planets, small planets, you know. And that's where humanity had come from this time around, you know, uh, because we'd had to leave the Earth for a while. We'd screwed it up so bad and totally, totally cataclysmicated it a long, long, long time ago, so we had to go off to the stars and live amongst them for a while while they re-nurtured uh, our mother back into being. We've really screwed up here before, but, you know, there's always that spring creek, that place where everything is together. And if one person gets that, well, we're preserved through all the ages and generations. One here, one there, one there. You know, they've got us through, man. And moments of connection, too. And moments of pure honesty and pure love, which do arise. Moments of deep appreciation of the mother love. You know, when we're in places like that on this earth, all people feel this. Except for maybe those that are cold and dark and live in the city all the time and don't know that. Yet even they have their ranchos out in the boondocks, don't they? And their castles in the top of the mountains, huh? See, they're trying to catch on and, you know, giving themselves plenty of opportunity to do it. Because I'm telling you, in those high places, the angels are very, very active. And in these magical places like that, one little place I found out in that turf out there, you know. This is where the angels live, man, you know. This is their, their home country until we can get back to our real home, which, wow, it's getting pretty close now, isn't it? You know, it's kind of reminding me when I find places like that, you know, the explorating in life that I've done to find the magic in the places. I do that a lot over the years. I've done a lot of that, you know, and I have found them and they found me. They've drawn me to them, actually, and me to them, too. But see, because I did that here on Earth, I've been gathering energies, baby, from the past, the ancient past. And we're coming back together with the full presence of it in the multi-dimensional expression. We're going explorating there. That's what we do here in Spring Creek. We go explorating there musically, physically, emotionally, mystically, what you'd call spiritually. It's the flow of love, baby. It's multi-dimensional. It expands your feelings. So you get a new perspective each and every day. You know, a brand new way, here in that coyote way, given over in the spring creek sort of way, from the original love, the original heart that brought the water of life forward and created such magic places on this earth to hold the energy of love. And you know what else that holds out there? The energy of the buffalo, too. That's where the heart of the buffalo is, is that country out there. And that's why the buffalo still live. And guess what, babies? They're making a hell of a comeback. The ranchers, man... They're going from cattle to buffalo completely. It's not, you know, five-eighths buffalo anymore. It's the real thing. They've realized it's better to go with nature than a ginner, man. And ultimately, even in the physical world, the, the buffalo return to the grasslands of the grand middle of Mother Turtle Island here, man, you know. Because we, like, you know, can expand and grow too, and all this nature can fit together. And you don't need all these little cities and towns and ranchos anymore. You just, I kind of, I don't know how to describe it, but you live in it and you're not of it. It all melds together naturally. Nature recreates the whole thing from the heart of love. And so our abodes are not as they are now, etc. You know, the whole feeling of existence is different. We're all part of the buffalo and they're all part of us. We're all in that flow. The buffalo has the heart of gold. Yeah, so do we. <laughs> Actually, it's in all of creation. It's just the more visible in some than it is the others. See, so buffalo kind of holds that spring creek energy in that way. I call it the energy of unity, of the unity feeling, where you can be a member of the collective and move as a collective does, the way the buffalo herds do. They move just in synchronicity, complete synchronicity. You know, there ain't nobody stepping on nobody's toes and they know exactly where they're all going. Yet, each buffalo feels it as a very personal and an alive and loving experience and loves their place in it. And loves the feeling of the prairie grass beneath their feet. Loves the atmosphere, the wide open spaces. The ability to be love on the roam in total freedom. 
to go where you will, to follow the flow of love and let it take you to all the nice places. So, you know, one time in season of the year, you're down there in the coastal areas around the, what we call the Gulf of Mexico now. And in the, in, the, in the summer, you're way up north, man, up into Alberta and North Dakota, what we call North Dakota now and so forth, man. And the grass is up to your belly and greener and shit. I mean, you know, it's paradise for the Roman buffalo. Well, the buffalo hold the heart of the human, too. You know what I mean? That's us. We love our creation and we love living in it. That's why we pulled creator into the creation as human beings our love has done this so now creator and creation are the same thing and we feel it all inside of our soft sweet little high as we take this magic carpet ride with the spirit of the buffalo too the buffalo heart coming forward from spring creek man yeah, here in the Colorado Rocky Mountain High, more or less. <laughs> the place where you do take off and fly. Once you get a clear drink of water, eh, dear? Yeah, there's not much of it left. But what little is left can clear up all the rest of it in a quick hurry, too, baby. In one moment, we can go from the most desperate times to the most full and fulfilling of times. In one moment. Hang on, babies, there's a lot more to go here in this beautiful little medicine show we call Spring Creek, don't you know? Oh, darlings, ain't you glad you come to Papa? I am too, man. You wear it so well. She goes, ah, oh, make my heart swell. I'm so in love. I'm so in love, man. With each and every one of you. So I can't go anywhere. I got, I got to be. I got to be the buffalo that I am, man. In the coyote sort of way, of course. Well, we'll explain a little more of that later today, okay? Or maybe tomorrow. I mean, don't have no sorrow. Just be filled with the love you are. Let's keep on rocking and rolling, strumming and strolling, and showing them how it is that life is, okay? Yeah, baby. You got it clear here on the Hazy Radio Network, dear, with Grandpa Coyote and friends. Spring Creek, home of the original waters, where we get it right from the beginning. <laughs> 